Our next speaker has both a JD and a PhD. He's a professor of political science at Columbus State University in Columbus, Ohio. He has published 13 books and received 13 awards for investigative journalism. The book of his, perhaps of greatest relevance today, is entitled Star Wars Weather Modification and Full Spectrum Dominance. He's been looking into the development of weapons of the kind that might have been used here on the World Trade Center. Please join me in welcoming Bob Fitrakis. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been sidetracked the last three years uh, following stolen elections, and many of you may have heard. Tragically, 63.6% uh, of all of the uh, election uh, commissions in Ohio in 88 counties accidentally destroyed their ballots from the 04 election making the final count actually impossible. Here we have uh, Dr. Brzezinski, again the National Security Advisor, in that very famous book, Between Two Ages. America's role in the technotronic era. Note, technologies will make available to the leaders of the major nations techniques for conducting secret warfare, of which only a bare minimum of the security forces need be appraised. Technology of weather modification could be employed to produce prolonged periods of drought or storm. He actually goes on to talk about also uses of weather and other weapons for mind control as well. And officially, this doesn't exist. Thank God. But occasionally you may read the newspapers and tucked in the back of newspapers you may find such quotes as this. Malaysia to battle smog with cyclones. Headline November 13, 1997, Wall Street Journal. Quote, the plan calls for the use of new Russian technology to create cyclones. The giant storms, also known as typhoons and hurricanes, to cause torrential rains washing the smoke out of the air of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Not illegal because it's not being used for military purposes. Note a very famous event, well known, in fact I studied this in law school on the Environmental Modification Treaty. Uh, this is the New York Times 6577. Again, talking about that great Chinese earthquake, of which, soon after that, the Chinese agreed to the Environmental Modification Treaty. Quote, just before the first tremor at 3.42 a.m., the sky lit up like daylight. The multi-hued lights, mainly white and red, were seen up to 200 miles away. Leaves on many trees were burnt to a crisp and, and growing vegetables were scorched on one side, as if by a fireball. So that's the New York Times reporting. Note the convention soon after that. Note the next year, one year later, May 18, 1977, entered into force in 78, ratified by the US in 79, the conventions on the prohibition of military or any other hostile use of environmental modification techniques. Note the famed Article 1. Each state party to this convention undertakes not to engage in military or any other hostile use of environmental modification techniques having, here's the catchphrase, widespread, long-lasting, or severe effects as the means of destruction, damage, or injury to any other state party. This has come to be known as you can only screw up the environment militarily for one season. That's how they interpret long-lasting. Note Article 3, and here's the loophole. The provisions of this convention shall not hinder the use of environmental modification techniques for peaceful purposes. Officially, the United States would never, and I mean never, engage in the violation of this treaty. Uh, of course, if you go to the TCOM Center, U.S. Test Command Center, you have the Test Technology Symposium of 97. On weather modification, Dr. Arnold Barnes of Operation Popeye 
fame with a very famous memo, Make Mud, Not War, to muddy the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Officially, we don't do this. We, uh, we have no history of weather modification for military purposes. So I don't know why he put up a major PowerPoint presentation outlining the entire history. And as part of that, Harp was there referring to it for military purposes. Officially, the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program has no military application whatsoever as ionosphere agitation. And any of those notions talked about by Dr. Eastland in Wired Magazine in great detail and or earlier in patents put forward by Tesla, among other, to the contrary, we should never consider that we would in be involved. Ah, I don't know how this potential weather modification capabilities got in here since it talks about degrading enemy forces and enhancing friendly forces. This is clearly illegal and is obviously a mistake. Joint vision for 2020, and let's go down to the operative part. The creation of a force that is dominant across the full spectrum of military operations. Persuasive in peace, decisive in war, preeminent in any form of conflict, even against its own people. Strategic contact, uh, take a look at that very famous phrase there. We're all familiar with, at least I hope we are. What is the goal? Uh, officially, the United States government stands for peace in the world, particularly the Bush administration. That's why I think his grandfather, Prescott Bush, laundered the money for the Nazis to help create peace uh, in the world. And I think that's why his great-grandfather, uh, Samuel Bush, gave that unbid contract to Percy Rockefeller for small arms during World War I. I'm from Columbus, uh, where Samuel Bush is buried in. Uh, there at Buckeye Steel Castings, where he gave his own self an unbid contract as well for steel uh, during World War I. But full spectrum dominance. Again, there's no such weapons as this, Dr. Fitrakis. Where would we even get these ideas? There might be other weapons out there. Look at this CBS News. Laser weapons in U.S. sites. <laughs> Note the date, October 20th, 2003. Recall what Brzezinski said. There would be secret weapons that would exist known only to a few. So by the time we get to know it from CBS, we can be assured that they've been in operations, modeled, tested, prior to this. U.S. scientists are on the verge of creating a laser weapon that could give American forces an awesome advantage on the battlefield commissioned by the United States military, weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025. Contrary to science fiction, the lasers will not be visible streams of light. By the time this stuff is announced, right, it's already gone in, in by CBS, it's already gone through Scientific America, Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, and a whole uh, round of testing for usually a decade or so prior to this. How will U.S. Uh, doctrine accommodate a weapon that can strike without detection possibly hundreds of miles away? Well, first, we could, uh, U.S. doctrine could start by a little transparency uh, so that we know we're actually building these things. Okay, U.S. Department of Energy, research news, bright future for tactical laser weapons. This is a test taken April of 2002. They reference a test from December 2001. And this is a minor test. They could take this up with a few changes of crystals about 300 times. Solid state laser, major breakthrough right around the same 
time period. There was a demonstration of white sands earlier, burned a one centimeter diameter hole straight through a two centimeter thick stack of steel samples in uh, six seconds. That's the small test laser. They had the technology, uh, admittedly, the Department of Energy to go up profoundly in power. 